whoever slathered that trawl. You gotta tell me when, when we're actually on. She says, okay. Kelsey, does that mean we're on? We're live. There you go. We're live. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for our second virtual first Wednesday. Um, obviously, we are disappointed to not have you here with us in the gallery. It is a weird time for all of us and a weird time for us. Normally, those of you who are familiar with the gallery, you know that this is the time where uh, you might see a few hundred people coming through the gallery uh, over a three hour period. And as you can see, we don't have that right now. Um, but we're happy that you're here with us uh, either on Facebook or on YouTube. We'll be doing this again at 730 on Instagram Live. So you can join us there if you want to uh, hear the artists again speak about their work. Um, you are more than welcome in the comments section to ask questions, uh, give thoughts, interpretations, anything you want to share with us. We can pass it along to the artists while we're speaking with them tonight. Um, we are thrilled to have three different artists, members of the gallery with us, um, one in person, two virtually. Uh, their work will be up for display all this month. Uh, it'll be up through October 29th. And you can come and see the work for free. There are no admission charges ever at the gallery. So any day except for Monday from noon to six, you can come and see this work for free. Uh, all the works that you're going to see tonight are also available for purchase. And if you go to our website, batonrougegallery.org, you can see our current exhibition. And then every work that you see tonight is already up there. You can actually purchase it right from the website. Uh, and we will have it ready for you to pick up as soon as this exhibition comes down. Uh, so tonight we're going to start in this room here, and we'll hear from April Hammock in just a second. We'll make our way through the hallway gallery and hear from Jessica Sharp, and then close things out with Craig McCullen as well. Before we do that, though, I want to say a quick word of thanks to all of our donors, all of our members. Um, like I said, this is a weird, strange, uneasy time, and it's because of our members, because of our donors, that we've been able to uh, not only keep the gallery going and keep the mission moving forward, um, but continue to plan for the future and plan for exhibitions in 2021 um, and do all the work that the gallery always does in terms of trying to connect artists and audiences. So thank you to everyone. If you are watching this and you are a member, please know how much we appreciate your support. Um, if you're watching this right now and you're not a member, please, please consider uh, becoming a member. You can do so on an annual basis or on a monthly basis, whatever's easier for you and your budget. Uh, membership start is uh, low as $5 a month and uh, there are certainly levels beyond that as well, uh, but it's a great way to support both local artists and an organization that's supported, that has been supporting them for over 50 years. So please consider doing that. Another way to support the gallery if you're interested in doing so is coming up uh, in November. On November 20th, we are happy to announce that we will be doing Kinetics this year. It will be a virtual version of Kinetics. Uh, we're happy to have Hancock Whitney back as our uh, presenting sponsor this year. So we hope that you will mark your calendar, save the date for November 20th. It is a Friday. Um, more information is coming next week on all of the works that will be up for bid. Um, a lot of what you love about Kinetics is staying the same. The works will start at $100 and go up from there. Um, but a lot of what you love about Kinetics will still be in place, but we'll just have to do it virtually this year. Uh, but it'll be a, a wonderful virtual event, and we hope you'll get excited about it with us and, and hopefully bid on some works and help the gallery uh, continue to move into 2021 on the right foot. So with that, I'll say thank you again for joining us for our virtual first Wednesday. And if you would, uh, we're going to assume that you're doing this anyway. So just go ahead and give a round of applause for our first artist tonight, April Hammock. Hi, it's so nice to uh, be uh, <laughs> Okay. Um, presenting tonight um, and lecturing about the work and all of that. Um, it's, of course, a, a challenge to be doing this through a mask. So I'm going to try to really be, um, you know, just really articulate uh, what I'm um, talking about. So um, my title, Electric Edens, is kind of continuation of um, Panamonian's Paradise and um, the idea of beauty as well as chaos. And that's what I was thinking in terms of this body of work, um, really using shapes, colors, and spaces to express movement in the forms in a, in, a, in a very lively way, as if they're real and they're congregating and they're you know having 
uh, these different episodes like that of what we do as humans. And so that's what I was thinking of when I created a lot of these pieces and stuff. So this is my first piece, The Waiting. And um, this is um, basically an, an environment that's um, inspired by Louisiana and particular swamps and stuff. And, and uh, you know, the very lush terrain that we have here in this, uh, the south state of, of this wonderful greenery and stuff and the flora and the fauna and all that stuff that I love to look at when I go on, on these hikes. <laughs> Yes, um, so this one um, is a little bit more aquatic by nature. I love to go to the Gulf Coast and I love the water. Um, I'm a little bit afraid of the water. Um, I actually learned how to swim when I was 26 years old. I had a bad experience when I was a child and I was turned upside down in inner tube. And uh, my mom rescued me, of course. So um, until then, I was always um, very scared of the water. But I got over my fear for the most part, but I'm still a little bit uh, fearful toward that. And I want to express that kind of chaotic feeling when I, uh, when I have, when I'm in that kind of, in water and I'm swimming, even though I know how to swim very well now. <laughs> this one is one of my favorite pieces that I just created. It's one of my latest, and I call this one East. Um, I've been having dreams about temples, which I think are really, which are really cool dreams. One is when I was with my mother, one I was with my father, and one I was alone. And when I was alone, the temp, this temple I went to, um, it was uh, somewhere in South Louisiana off I-12. The other two were in New Mexico and uh, Texas. So I, um, I didn't really think too hard when I was working on this particular piece. I just wanted my thoughts to wander as I created it. And I took my time even then. I actually, was, it was rather a spontaneous piece. But it does definitely remind me of the dreams that I had when I approached these very imagined temples. They're nothing like I've seen in reality. And, uh, and, it, and uh, in a dream, when I was at this temple, I was trying to find my way home. And I asked the tourists, like, where's home? And they said East. So that's why I call this piece East, because it's a very personal piece. And it's a very, um, it, it, it just, it's something that is very, um, it means a lot to me that I was able to show it here, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, this one I created, it was almost, um, it's close to a year ago. And it took a long time on this one, several, a few months, in fact. And I just really wanted to create all these layers to express these different colors that come in together to create more colors, like a prism and like the light being refracted and reflected in order to, uh, you know, kind of the idea of maybe something reflected off of water or some kind of surface. Um, with this particular piece. And I wanted to have that sense of unity, but the forms have their own character and the entities of themselves in a sense. So um, that's why I called this one splinter prism. This one I created a couple years ago. It's called a pond, and this is actually an oil painting. I do a lot of paintings in acrylic, but I do love oils and I painted in oils for a long time. And I just, for some reason, about 10 years ago, lost interest in oils and I went into acrylic paintings. I think partly because I like painting lots of layers, but I'm actually rekindled interest, have a rekindled interest with oils. So I'm going back into oils, even though I'm continuing with acrylics, but this is not dissimilar to the last piece that I just lectured about in terms of light being refracted and reflected through prisms and such as atmospheres and water even, like the elements. This one is called Midnight Park. And I did this one last summer 
And when I did this piece, I was thinking about a park that I visited when I was in college. I visited very often in the middle of the night sometimes. And um, I had thought about the colors that I um, really enjoyed. This was probably back in the early 90s. And so this particular piece kind of is reflection, is a reflection of the early 90s when I was in college and the colors that I saw at this park in the middle of the night. So this one is another favorite of mine, the playful serpent. And this one um, has lots of textures. And I was thinking in terms of these organisms coming together, congregating together um, to create this rather chaotic yet um, pretty environment. Um, again, that idea of beauty and chaos coming together um, in a sense, kind of like the sublime. And uh, so this one has lots of textures and layers. And um, I don't, I think, I'm sure you, a lot of you guys are familiar with Juan Miro. And I was able to see a lot of his works in person. So I'm thinking in terms of the, the organisms, you know, these forms being alive, having character and knowing what they're doing. They're aware of each other and they're aware of their environment. So this one is, um, this was not the easiest one to title. I call this one Seeds of Life. And it's basically about growth about procreation and maybe even a little bit about evolution and mutation. This one is about pretty much the same thing as the last one, um, but I was liking the more limited use of yellows and just that warm palette. And it's very much about growth and procreation in the spring, things coming to life, and the textures that I see when I'm out in nature walking around in my hikes. This one was inspired by, um, I look at um, a lot of uh, the grounds, like when I walk and stuff, and I. I look at the ground a lot. I mean, if you look at the ground enough, you start to see things moving around, of course, lots of bugs and worms and such. And that's how I got this inspiration to do something like this. It's kind of an improvisation of what I see in nature. And this is an oil painting too. And uh, so that was kind of basically what inspired that. I like to look at puddles and that's how I get <laughs> some of my inspiration. And this is, uh, I call this riverbed. So um, I was thinking about in, uh, landscapes in particular and the idea of the, the circadian rhythm, the sun setting and the, the, the cycle of night and day and things um, kind of reacting to that rhythm and coming to life and then settling down. And this one, yeah, my celestial procreation. So it's kind of the, in a sense, how I see it in a divine sense, that idea of the, the sacredness of life and how life comes about and, and how it um, maybe metamorphosizes into other things. Thank you, April. You're Thank welcome. you for sharing your work with us okay. all this month. Uh, again, if you are interested in seeing these works in person, you can come through October 29th. Uh, the gallery is open, free to the public, uh, between noon and six, every day but Monday. So come and check out uh, April Hammock's latest show, Electric Edens. Um, now we're going to transition into the hallway gallery, and we'll hear from Jessica Sharp, a Baton Rouge Gallery artist member. Uh, who actually currently lives in Jacksonville, Florida, which is why she is not with us in person tonight. Um, but we're thrilled to have her work with us, um, and we'll move our way into the hallway gallery, and she can tell you more. Hello, hello. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in and checking out the work. 
Uh, really happy to be showing with April. Our work is very different. Hers is much more abstract, expressionist, but I feel like actually the ideas are very similar. A lot of talking about these like organic organisms and cycles, a lot of things she was saying I could say, oh, I could say that about my work too, even though they look totally different. Uh, so we can start here. I'm going to talk a little bit about process first, my technique. Uh, so usually with these smaller pieces, this is a continuation of my Unknowable series. Uh, I've been working on it for a few years now. Uh, they're all acrylic paint and collage. So I usually work on about five or six of these at one time. And I start with the landscape. So the landscape kind of becomes a backdrop. Uh, they're kind of like back to expressionists in a way. Uh, they're, I call them like Jungian landscapes. So I just paint them out of my imagination. I do some plain air painting to kind of keep up with actual what a landscape looks like. But when I'm actually painting these, it comes right out of my head. Uh, so I see these as sort of this, this projection field. And then I collage on top of that. So I work on about five or six of these. And then I have just tons of old encyclopedias, old cookbooks anything I can find at estate sales. And I just have a whole bunch of cutouts in front of me and I just kind of start piecing things together and just sort of seeing what happens. So it's a real like surrealist method of chance and kind of different pieces coming together to create metaphors. Uh, the one here, the purple and green one is uh, oh, right here, that feed me, uh, that one is about being a new mother and having a newborn, we're constantly in this cycle of eating and pooping. So that's a little bit where my head was on that one. And we can kind of keep going down here. Uh, so that one on the lower is hive mind. And you're gonna see a lot of uh, like monkeys that have been popping up a lot. This idea of like the monkey brain, uh, the show's titled Ancient Feelings. So I'm thinking a lot about these really like primal instincts and these primal conflicts, these sort of ancient feelings, ancient battles, uh, these kind of epic emotions that go throughout all of time. Uh, so with the monkeys that comes up a lot, I've also been looking at the work of Terrence McKenna. He's a real kooky kind of philosophy guy. He died in the late nineties. But uh, he has a lot of weird theories about psychedelics and meditation. And one of his theories is that monkeys were the first creature to eat mushrooms and they had a psychedelic experience and therefore were able to become self-aware. And that's like the whole point of human existence is to be nature becoming aware of itself. Uh, this one right here is called The Cosmic Serpent, a great book if you come across it. And it's, I think it's also titled, some of these titles, it's like 125 billion miles of DNA, which is how much DNA is in the human body. So I see the monkey face there, DNA strands. And kind of go down the line here. This butterfly one is called Flutters. That was one I did when I was pregnant. You can probably kind of see the reference there. You have those first little flutters in your pelvis. And here's another one. I think I did this when I was pregnant too. I have some pictures. Some, some of those pieces are like pictures of ultrasounds. And then we have our third eye. The eyes and the faces appear in my work a lot. I think I'm kind of like childlike in that I see faces and everything. Uh, but it's kind of coming back to this idea of everything in nature being like an alive organism. And so these things are sort of manifesting and they're looking back at you and saying like, well, who are you? I'm here to talk to you. Uh, see if we can go on here. I don't really have to talk about every work, but again, here you can see the monkey brains again. Uh, let's see, what is this one? Cellular, cellular machinery. So I love this uh, bodily. I have a whole lot of like anatomy textbooks that I use. I really love that imagery. 
So I think of these, all of these as like kind of the creatures that are in there are sort of manifestations. So I never really know what's going to come out. And then it's kind of like this little elf kind of develops and starts talking to me. Uh, this one, I think it's called Electric Skies. Uh, you ever heard of the theory of the electric universe? Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, okay, this was one of my most recent paintings. It's called Virus of the Crown Chakra. Uh, so if you think about the word coronavirus, uh, corona is another word for crown, which is your third eye chakra, which is your chakra for like openness and awareness. So I was playing with that idea in this one. So you see the little coronavirus down there. And what else on this? Uh, uh, one on the top there is called Follow the White Rabbit. Again, sort of a talking about this sort of weird political climate that we're in right now and this time where it's like no one knows what's real you know this fake news thing and, and and i'm asking like well what kind of energy are we collectively projecting right now i think it's something we really have to be careful of uh what's the media here yeah so it's acrylic paint and then their collage on top so it's basically two layers. Then we have hot dog down there. That was just kind of a fun one. <laughs> I love the comments. It's kind of hard to just sit here and just talk at nothing. <laughs> I call myself. Uh, so we're coming down here. Uh, the face one here is called Inside Out. Again, coming back to this idea of the faces looking at you. I've also been thinking a lot about the, the human brain and like the brain development, especially having two young children. I'm always reading about child brain development. And so thinking about the left brain and the right brain, uh, I'm very left brain person, or right brain person, left handed person. Uh, so I think that's interesting about what Eastern religions say. Coming down here, we got some pyramids. Uh, coming back to the Project Monarch, another one of those conspiracy theories. And again with the monkeys. And yeah, some monkeys eating mushrooms. And now what's the title on this one? Oh yeah, the knowing. So finding eye and this one here is called the primal lobe so again thinking about brain hemispheres these sort of epic battles and primal emotions all right thank you jessica anything else you think folks should know about your show or about your work come and see it <laughs> <laughs> couldn't have said it better all right thank you jessica Another round of applause for Jessica. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are going to make our way into the front gallery. We'll hear from our last artist this month, uh, Craig McCullen, a longtime uh, artist member here at the gallery who has both uh, stained glass work and drawings um, here in the front room. Uh, so please join us. Uh, if anybody would like, uh, when you become a member, I, earlier I mentioned about becoming a member at the gallery. Uh, among the many perks, aside from just knowing that you've helped support the arts in your city, uh, there's a lot of uh, fun things that we get to pass along to you, including t-shirts, coffee mugs, um, and even a, a coffee book, the only local art coffee book uh, there is. So uh, that book has over 240 color, full color reproductions um, of local art, photography, paintings, you name it, um, as well as a, a history of the gallery as well. So please uh, consider becoming a member joining today uh, so that we can get those things in your hand. Uh, so with that, please enjoy the work of Craig McCullen and his latest show, Let Sketches in Life. Hello, everyone. 
Uh, Craig McCullen. Tonight I'm celebrating. This is my 40th year at the Baton Rouge Gallery. First exhibit in 1980 when it was in downtown Baton Rouge. I'm uh, looking forward to the next 40 years. <laughs> and so tonight, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about myself, which may explain some of these artworks that you see. Uh, this series of windows is a celebration of light. And if many of you know the spectrum of light, it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And so these windows, each one, are small representations of each of those pieces. This one, of course, is yellow and yeah, a yellow cat. Here we have green, and it's called Not Far From The Tree. This one, I see, uh, is very reminiscent of the cathedrals in Europe, the blue, and, and it's called uh, Backyard Cathedral, which all of us may have if you look through your tree leaves. <laughs> the background is copper and glass. Let me tell you just a little bit about glass. It has been the most intriguing, challenging material to work with. It has never failed to keep me totally involved. Uh, glass changes every moment of the day. Uh, it is dependent on light, it's dependent on shadow, it's dependent on what's through it and what's behind it. And this piece right here can be 50 different images and it will probably be 500 more images over its lifetime for you. Uh, the glass has been, it's, it's been my uh, decadent weakness. I am a collector of glass. I collect the best glass in the world. And these are made with some of the finest glass, hand-blown glass from Europe, hand-blown glass from artisans in America that, you know, they're artists, and I get the opportunity to, you know, use their glass in my work. This piece incorporates brass along with the glass, so I call it a glass sculpture. And one reason is because stained glass is usually dependent on light. Because of the Baton Rouge Gallery, I have thought of ways of exhibiting that are dependent on backlight and front light. So this piece, you know, is, is a full, you know, it, it's not a one-sided type of art, like many stained glass windows where when it's nighttime, you know, the window is not really as prominent as it is during the day. This one will give you views all the time. Uh, this one, I have to, the Vache, it's a horse race, but this horse is something that Kokomo Glass annually produces to celebrate their glass company. They stamp it with the glass. And of course here it's a race and I live here in Lafayette, which is horse country. <laughs> I know many horse trainers. Uh, horse racing is very important to Louisiana. And I really like that. And of course, this one represents orange, which is, you know, kind of an exciting fast color anyway. You know, red is the heart. But what you're not seeing here <laughs> is that clear glass. That is called a Rimi glass from France. It is the most beautiful glass. And, uh, in certain light, the red of the heart and the copper almost are black, and you don't even see the heart. You just barely see a little glow. It, it is such a treat. I advise you to ask them to turn out the lights in the gallery. Maybe that'll happen there for you. <laughs> you know, when you're visiting, of course. 
Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Let me tell you, ooh, we have these two, I forgot. Of course, the one in the end is the most important because, you know, the spectrum of light is white and it, it breaks into its color, you know, which we've seen on the other side. So this one is called hello. But as we recall in the Bible, the first thing God did says, let there be light. And this one is that celebration. It's also a line drawing. <laughs> oh, this one is the most rich, deep purple. But purple is a very ambiguous color. The Japanese are not pleased with purple because they think that it is indecisive. And I thought that that'd be a good term for this one. And of course, you know, my abstract drawing here is a little bit uh, unbalanced, which it could be either way, it could go either way. So I thought that was a good title for this piece. This one sort of celebrates purple, red, purple. And uh, again, it's just an odd color, but I call it little wing. And notice glass has texture, and you, you don't see the subtle textures in some of those colors, but. Uh, Movement, you know, anything behind is silly, lightens up the piece and, and, and makes it shine. I always tell people that glass is actually a jewel, and I think that's how I approach it. I, I don't even really look at the image as much as I look at the jewel quality of the glass. And again, because I know each piece of glass, I know where it came from. I know many times... Uh, you know, the process involved, the artist involved. Uh, I celebrate each little shape as an important jewel. This one is indigo, and indigo is a cool color. <laughs> and I did call this one first snow. Uh, and I have this brass leaf on top of it, which, you know, it... it makes it a sculptural piece the the indigo is so dark that you know you may just not see it but that brass livens it and then in you know certain times of the day you'll just find this cold and wonderful <laughs> all right here's our time uh it probably would be better to start the other end, but we'll start this end first. <laughs> I called the, the show, you know, line drawing, and I do lead work line drawings. Well, outside my home are many spiders. <laughs> and on vacation, I see many sky riders. And I just had so much fun. I thought, let's have a battle here. And so both the spider and the plane are making this drawing. And of course, it's uh, correct for this time of year. <laughs> we, we have a mask drawing, and I think that's important. We need to promote that. I've heard it said that this may be something that we deal with for a long time. You know, it may, And I actually think masks, at first, I was a little concerned with masks, you know, I said, well, you can rob the bank. But now I'm starting to think people are kind of attractive with masks <laughs> and people are getting more creative with their masks. Now, this one's called phase one. And, you know, we've all gone through the different phases of coronavirus. And with every phase, I think we all have enjoyed uh, a drink or two to sort of get us through the phase. So this one's phase one. But again, it's somewhat like my stained glass pieces in that I really am concerned with shapes. It's one of the reasons why I do these black and white drawings. Every shape in a format is beautiful. And it's amazing, you know, uh, 
I don't, when I look at a drawing, many times I don't even look at the subject of it. I just look at the painting itself, the, the painting, the, the, the components, the paint, the ink, the color. You know, it, it's a representation. Uh, think of us as travelers from another planet. You know, we are making a representation of what we see, the shapes, the colors, the spaces. And this one's space one. Well, this is space too. And, uh, you know, things lightened up in our coronavirus challenge, but things somewhat remain the same too. We, we celebrated phase two along with phase one. Good friend of mine. And this one's phase three. And, you know, those masks are very important but also our uh, surviving our, our challenges here is important too. And uh, here's a picture of my son. He's canoeing. Uh, this is called Big Alligator, Little Canoe. And uh, the image is sort of just a scary image of what he may have imagined as an alligator. Beautiful shapes. And finally, the last one is called He Who Blinks First. And this is a self-portrait. It's a little bit recycled. It was from my last show, which was called The Gods Are Crazy. And this is uh, my challenge to one of the gods. <laughs> But, you know, both of us are socially correct, and that's the important thing these days. Well, guys, like I say, thank you so much. It, it, the Baton Rouge Gallery, most fabulous place for a person to grow their art, to have the ability to consider, you know, I, I went to school with many of the people that are members of the Baton Rouge Gallery, and it's always been uh, a reunion. It's always been something where I've tried to impress my friends with my tricks. They've tried to impress me with their, not their tricks, but their latest thoughts. Uh, it's, it's just been terrific to be part of the Baton Rouge Gallery. Thank you, Jason. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for sharing your work with us this month and, and throughout the year. So uh, thank you to everybody who joined us tonight. Thank you. Please come by and see the show. Again, the gallery is free and open to the public every day but Monday from noon to six. Please come check out this work for yourself. Trust me, these stained glass works do not show up on your screen quite as well as they do when you're here in person. Um, Craig touched on his work with the masks. If you are interested in getting a mask, many of you may already know that we have uh, the work of 65 different artist members on masks. You can see one uh, that I'm wearing now from one of our artist members, Catherine Scherer. Uh, so please, we've got a number of them here in house and more that we can order uh, online for you. So please uh, check out those masks on our website. And again, please mark your calendars. November 20th, Kinetics presented by Hancock Whitney. It'll be a great night. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you back in the gallery real soon. Come by and check us out.